I gotta be honest, I've really been enjoying Madden 23 ever since the February title update. I wanna kiss you all over. But with 3-3 back, one of the more frequently asked questions I'm getting is, how do we block this meta? Truthfully, it's the same way that we've been blocking it for years. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you guys this re-emerging meta, how you guys can counter it, and start moving the ball against this zone that we've been talking about over the last couple weeks. What is up guys, Zay from Zay Madden YouTube channel. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about the reemergence of the Nickel 3-3 Cub. This has been the meta on defense for almost three years now. This really came into competitive Madden as a run defense back in late Madden 20. And it's basically stuck as a meta defense ever since. This is always a popular defense that seems to give a lot of players trouble. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to block this, uh, how it's set up, everything you guys need to know to start moving the ball on this and get to basically attacking the coverage that's behind this blitz. So let's go ahead and get into it. Really, really easy blitz setup. Doesn't matter whether or not you're running, you know, zone or man, pretty much the same gist, no matter what. Uh, and a lot of different setups, truthfully. Uh, you'll see some players will spread their line, pinch their linebackers, crash up, QB contain, stand in the opposite gap of the running back. You see a lot of this. Um, traditionally, when people block the running back, it does tend to come in off the edge. Um, you will see though that it's easier for a running back to block and actually blocking outside linebacker off the edge. When people start to run more of the quote unquote contain variant, and they crash their defensive line up and QB contain. This is really where people start to notice that the running back just kind of dumbs out. Guys tend to come in off the edge and it can be a little bit more problematic. The other thing is that traditionally running backs tend to struggle with contained loopers anyways. So there is a pretty substantial percentage of the time where even if somebody does block a running back and maybe they go ahead and slide protect uh, to make that running back block the looping edge contain. Sometimes that guy will run all the way around him um, and there's an opportunity for them to, you know, get around the running back and back to the quarterback. Of course, when the running back does block him, it's great, gives you time to set up your man beater, your zone beater, but it can still be very, very frustrating. Let's go ahead and get into how to block this. But before we do, if you guys could do me a quick favor, make sure you guys hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, Hit the notification bell so you're notified of all of our uploads here on the Zam Madden YouTube channel. And also drop a comment below to help push this video out in the algorithm so this channel reaches other Madden players just like you looking for tips, tricks, and tutorial content. So as I mentioned, this is really one of those blitzes where a lot of players just really like the contains. Um, you know, a lot of players will kind of set this up. And if you especially send five out, you're going to get a guy free in off the edge or through the B gap. I've seen a couple of players that um, will do this first tactic. And what I'm going to show you is just simply blocking the running back and then actually IDing the mic on the nose tackle. Um, some players will do this. Uh, I actually started to notice it a fair amount in the Madden Bowl um, and really saw this quite a bit against the regular 3-3 loop meta which had contains at that point in time and it seemed to do a decent enough job so again just blocking the running back IDing the mic on the nose tackle seemed to do a pretty good job but again you see that this blitz can be pretty annoying so again those contains can get real real frustrating to deal with the other thing that I haven't mentioned is that a lot of players will stand in the gap opposite the running back uh, it's when they stand on the same side as the running back that you start to notice the running back does a better job so if you guys are facing this from an offensive perspective if you notice they're standing on the running back side you might actually get better performance uh you see right there how that blitz pickup was much different when the user was on the running back side as opposed to opposite of the running back so that could be a little bit of a tell not only for you guys as offensive players to know that you're going to be fine with IDing the mic on the nose tackle if they're standing on the same side as the running back but if they're standing on the opposite side of the running back, there's a chance that the running back will still dumb out, which is kind of frustrating. That's gonna segue us into kind of this next portion of the video where we talk about in general, um, what you guys can do if you're struggling with a running back blocking this, they're just kind of dumbing out. So what we'll do here is we will actually block the running back and I will go ahead and I will add in a slide protection. So the thing that you guys need to know about slide protecting is that when you have the running back blocking and you slide protect, the running back tends to look to the opposite side of the slide protection, meaning that if I were to slide protect to the left here, the running back is actually gonna go to the right side of the formation and pick up the right side rusher. So if I do this slide protection left, typically the running back is gonna target 
Terrell Suggs off of that right edge. You guys could even go as far as to slap the mic on Suggs to kind of tell the running back, hey, this is who I want you guys to block. That way, when you snap the ball, you see that Suggs goes all the way across, gets the block on him, and now we have time to focus on our route combinations down the field. It's pretty easy stuff, but I just wanted to make sure you guys were aware of that. Conversely, you guys could run this the other direction, meaning that we block the running back, slide protect to the right, which means the running back is gonna look to the left. And if you want to, go ahead and put the ID of the mic on the running back this way. In this situation, you're gonna see the running back picks up everyone. The running back picks up the outside linebacker off the contain. And of course, sheds can still occur, but again, a clean pocket and no immediate threat straight at the quarterback, which is a huge help for you guys to have time and set up your out combos. So in general, those are really, really great ways to deal with blocking this blitz. But I want to draw attention to some of these little delay routes. You'll note that we have these delay routes on certain plays that actually could be to your benefit. And a lot of players don't trust delay routes because they feel over the years that they leave too early and they get you sacked and it, it ends up being frustrating. But one thing you'll actually note with this is that if you go ahead and use those delay routes and you pair them with the slide protection, you can sometimes get that C icon on the edge rusher. This is very, very important because if you block a running back, traditionally the guy that is manned up on the running back will rotate to a deep area of the field. So note right here that the safety on the left is rotated to the center of the field because the running back blocked. This basically turns this into a cover one blitz, which makes it really, really hard to beat any of the man coverage deep over the middle of the field. However, when we utilize a delay route, we could go ahead and set this up so that the man that is actually assigned to the running back knows that he's on a route and will end up running down towards line of scrimmage, which should open up the middle of the field for us to throw post routes. Granted, we threw an under pressure and accurate right there. EA Sports, it's in the game. But you saw that the safety that was on the running back knew that he was running, running a route and he vacated that area of the field because the running back was in fact running that route. So that's a huge thing for you guys to know when you're dealing with these man-to-man -man blitzes where these safeties actually help out their coverage by dropping into the areas of the field that are open to cover because the running back is no longer running a route. You can utilize these check and release routes to kind of open up areas of the field while still picking up the blitz. So keep that in the back of your mind. Now, the next thing that I want to tell you just real quick before we wrap up this video is that we know tight ends this year don't do a great job against edge rushers. In a lot of cases, if you leave a tight end one-on-one -on -one with anybody in this game, they will instantly beat that tight end with a speed rush or a swim or a club or some sort of quick win animation. It's just the way that the game is coded this year. You guys can also block the nickel through three cub if they are actually rushing and not containing by utilizing a secure protector on your tight end. There are a few items in the game, at least off the top of my head, Gronkowski, which is a level pass reward, Delaney Walker, and also the big dog, AKA Mercedes Lewis, all get the secure protector ability for one AP. And this is actually really valuable because you can block some of these blitzes that typically you wouldn't be able to utilize a tight end against with the secure protector ability, which is gonna actually allow you to use your running back out of the backfield and pull that safety that we just showed you how to manipulate out of the play. So if that's something that piques your interest, you guys could slap a one AP ability on your tight end to get better results and have more variability in not only your route combinations, but your pass protections as well, which will keep your opponent on their toes. So I hope that today's video helped you guys out with learning how to block the 3-3 Cub. If it did, make sure you guys drop a like on the video. If you guys want more, head over to my strategy website, www.gridirongameplans.gg, where you unlock everything on the website for $9.95 a month. That is all my offensive and defensive game plan weekly vault updates, weekly lab sessions inside of our Discord channel, and much, much more. Go check it out. Subscribe here to the channel. We'll see you guys later this afternoon with our next YouTube short and tomorrow with our next long form video update. Until then, this is Ann. Get the lab and good luck.